tithes and offerings. But uh, this week, I want to get back into the series that I've been in, uh, The Good Shepherd. And we're going to pick up in verse 4. We're going to read uh, in the scriptures, Psalm 23, 1 through 4 again, of, of course. But I've entitled the message today, Jesus is the God of our valleys. Jesus is the God of our valleys. And so just like every week that we've done when we've been in this uh, series, I wanted to uh, uh, just uh, start with John chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus speaking, he said, I am the good shepherd. So right off the bat, we know Jesus is the good shepherd. And he says, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep or for the sheep. John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Boy, isn't that wonderful. And then Psalm 23, 1 through 6, if you've got your Bibles, I'd like for you to uh, turn there and it'll be on the screen and then we're going to pray. It reads, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And here's where we're going to pick up today. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the wonderful time in worship and for the opportunities that you've given us to be in your presence. And now I pray you would anoint me to speak forth your word, not in word and tongue only, but also in power and in deed. Lord God, I pray that you would just anoint our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Anoint our eyes to see what the Spirit is trying to show us. Speak to our hearts, every one of us today. God, I pray that you would anoint me, Father God, and uh, let, it, let this word fall in the good soil of our hearts and grow and bear forth fruit in our lives. God, speak right through me today. In Jesus' name, I pray. And if you're there at home, just shout out a good amen and hold your Bibles up in whatever forms you have. And let's, let's declare, Father, today, this week, by your grace, I'm going to be a doer of your word and not a hearer only, deceiving my own self. Now, Lord, anoint my ears, anoint my heart, anoint my spirit, my soul, my mind, and my body to receive the truth of your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. High five somebody right there, wherever you're watching. If you're alone, just give yourself a pat on the shoulder. There we go. I don't know if you've ever been in a valley before. If you've been along, uh, living in this life very long at all, I know you've had some valley experiences. I know that there have been times in my life where I have been in some dark, deep valleys. I, I'm talking about the kind of valleys where I didn't know if I was coming out. The kind of valleys where I couldn't see the mountaintop. The kind of valleys where it just felt like it was going to do me in, that I was never coming out. I, I thought I was finished. But I learned that God was with me the whole time. There's been some valleys in my life that I've prayed and said, God, where are you? I can't feel you. I can't find you. I can't hear from you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you've been in those valleys before. Maybe you're in there one now and you're going, hey, that's me. There's brass heavens over my head. I can't get a word from God. No matter how much I worship, I can't get in His presence. There's some dark days I'm living in. There's some tough things going on in my life right now. And I'm, I'm asking, God, where are you? Because I can't find you. If you've ever been there before, then this particular verse is going to be very comforting to you before this is over with. And that leads me to point number one. And that is, point number one is basically the title of the message. And that is, Jesus is the God of our valleys. And you'll notice on your screen, valleys there is underlined. So I want to focus on the word valley for a minute. There's, there is one word translated from the original Hebrew for the words shadow of death. So we read in our English Bible, shadow of death, but there's only one Hebrew word that is translated for that. And it means death shadow or deep shadow. Basically a deep gloom. It's a death shadow. Just right there in the chat, just say death shadow. Right there in, in your chat room, just type that in. It gives the illusion of danger ahead. In Africa's Victoria Falls, uh, it produces a cloud of mist that is often heavy enough to impair visibility. 
And one person wrote this. I, I, I found this hysterical. He said, while I was walking in the, the path that skirts the gorge into which the Zambezi River tumbles, I noticed a sign on the rim but couldn't make it out, not wanting to miss whatever it might be. I slithered and slid through the mud out to the very brink of the falls, only to read the message, danger, crumbling edge. Isn't that the way life is sometimes? Our curiosity gets the best of us. We get out there on the edge and their sign right there of life is telling us, be careful, you're about to fall over. Obviously, it didn't crumble on him or he couldn't have been able to tell us that. But isn't that the way life goes sometimes? Valley. I want you to think valley. When I think of a valley, I think of like Kentucky. You have these beautiful rolling hills, and they go down into a lush green area and come up the other side, and it's beautiful, and it's picturesque, and it's nice. But that is not the valley that is being described by David here in Psalm 23. Valley here is rather a chasm among the hills. It is a deep, abrupt, faintly lit ravine. Steep sides, narrow floor, very dangerous. This actually describes a valley in Israel that runs from Jerusalem to the Dead Sea. And we've seen it many times in Israel. And it is deep. It is a very deep gorge. And it is very dangerous. It is rough. It is so dangerous. Sheep could fall to their death at any moment. It is not a journey anybody would want to take. And to us, what does that speak? It speaks of a deep, dangerous valley in life that we have to face sometimes. Maybe it's a bad doctor's report where he says it's cancer. Maybe it's the coronavirus. Maybe it's the pink slip from work that says, we're sorry, but we're having to lay you off. Maybe it's the unexpected death of a loved one. Whatever it is, we have all faced valleys and they come unexpectedly sometimes. And if we had it our way, we would never want to walk through those valleys. We would want to go the other way. But there are times in life that we simply have to walk through some valleys. There will be valleys in this life. But we don't have to fear them. Because our good shepherd is with us. Aren't you glad about that? Oh, just type in the chat right there. Our good shepherd is with me. Man, it's wonderful. Uh, And that leads me to point number two, and that is this. God intends on us going through our valleys. I want you to notice through there is underlined. And I want to focus on the word through. Because there are valleys in this life, but we're not intended to stay in those valleys. See, it is not a place for us to dwell. It's never been an intention for us to dwell in in valleys. Just like the wilderness wasn't a place for the children of Israel to live, God just meant for them to go through the wilderness. It was their own sin that caused them to dwell there. In the same way, God does not intend for us to dwell and stay forever in our valleys. God has never, listen, when you serve Jesus Christ, He is not promising you that you will never go through problems in this life. He is not promising you a problem-free life. He is not promising you that you'll never face a valley. That's just human life and that's just living on this earth. But what He does promise is that He will be with you. Woo! Hallelujah! You're not alone. Folks, it is is not a place for us to dwell. It is not a place uh, of, of dwelling, but it is a place of passage. Something that we go through from time to time. See, God intends for us to go through this coronavirus pandemic. God wants to help you through the valley that your marriage or your relationship with your roommate or your relationship with your boyfriend or girlfriend or your relationship with your friend or, your, or what your family is in right now. God wants you to go through that valley. God wants you to get through the financial valley that you're faced with right now. Listen, this is not the end all. You're going to get through this. God wants to help you through the valley that your mind, your emotions, and your body may be in right now. God wants to get you through the valley of depression and discouragement right now. The key and the point I want to say is this. God wants to help you get through it. We're supposed to go through the valley. Hallelujah. This valley isn't a place that you build your home in. Rather, you pass through to the other side. Our valleys are not a place of permanence, rather a place of passage. We have the assurance that as we walk through the valley, that God is with us. Oh, just type in the chat room right there that God is with us. Right there in the comment section. It's a comfort to know that God does not stand on the threshold of the valley and point us through it. Listen, I, there's nothing worse to me than to go in a store that I'm unfamiliar with. 
and I need to buy an item, and I finally see somebody working there, and when I ask them, they say, oh, it's about 17 rows that way. You turn left, and it's somewhere down there. I think maybe it's 15 rows. I don't know. It's just somewhere that way. And they send you on a whole goose chase. And if you're like me, boy, that, I don't like that. I like it when I go to a store and they say, well, hold on, let me stop what I'm doing and I'll walk you to it. And they walk me right there and say, here it is, sir, right here. I love that. That's the kind of store I'm going to keep going to. When I go, Holly and I go to a conference or a new church, I love it when they have people at the doors and they'll they'll not just point us the right way. They'll, They'll have people there, they'll say, let me just walk you this way. Let me show you where it's at. I love that. Or maybe you go to a new complex or a new building or you're in an unfamiliar area. Somebody says, well, let me just walk you that way. There's something special about that. Aren't you glad that when we get to our valleys, God doesn't say, well, you know, it's some distance over that way. You'll get through it. I'll see you maybe on the other side. Aren't you also glad that God doesn't walk with us halfway and then go, oh, I I can't handle this no more. (laughs) I'm out of here. This valley's too big for me. Listen, you're on your own. I hope you make it out alive, but I'm gone. I can't deal with this. Look, God doesn't do that. God walks with us every step of the way. And just like sheep, we can calmly walk through the valley and not be frightened. Aren't you glad God doesn't say, well, you're on your own with this coronavirus. Or you're on your own with that cancer report. Well, I don't know how to fix diabetes. Well, I don't know how to take care of your broken marriage. Well, I don't know about your broken friendship. You're on your own there. Hope it works out. Aren't you glad God doesn't leave us alone? He's there to guide us and help us. Nor does He walk us halfway through and say, This is too much for me. I'm done. Look, your valley is not your home. We're so tempted when we get in a valley to feel like, This is it. I'm never coming out of this. I'm so low, all I can see is the gum on the bottom of everybody else's shoe. Everybody else has it better than me. Everybody else has wonderful things going on. Nothing's going right for me. It's so easy to get wrapped in that. It's so easy to look in life and feel like a temporary circumstance is permanent. Never make permanent decisions in temporary circumstances. We don't have to fear the valleys of life. We have nothing to fear because the Lord is my shepherd right now and He is with me through thin and thick, through dark and light. Many people mistakenly read this scripture and they read the valley of death. But notice the words are the valley of the shadow of death. And that leads me to my final point, point three. And that is God will lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice that shadow is underlined there. I really want to spend some time focusing on the word shadow. Just right there in the chat room, in the, in the chat comment section, just type in shadow because I believe God's going to give you a revelation of something here. Now David may have had a literal death in mind when he wrote this, but it is evident that the reference is not exclusively to death. It is only the darkness that... Not only the darkness that David is describing, but the darkness where death lurks for the sheep. or The death shadow. We're going to call it the death shadow. Because that's what the word means. It's the reports of the people dying of coronavirus and the constant news reports and the death toll going on and on. It's It's the constant shadow of wondering, am I going to get the coronavirus? Is someone I love going to get it? Are we going to be on a ventilator? Are we going to make it? It is that's what makes the shadow of the coronavirus so bad. Every dismal and, and, and deadly passage, I want to tell you, God is still with us. I don't care how bleak it looks, how gloom, doom, and despair it may seem. God is with us. He is with us, listen, in the shadow of death. In the valley of the shadow of death, no less than he is by the still quiet waters, by the green pastures, or by the paths of righteousness. God is not a fair weather God where he's with you today, but, he, but as soon as things go bad, you're on your own. He is not a bandwagon fan. When, you, when the team's on top, you're their fan. But then when they go in the cellar, you jump on somebody else's bandwagon. Human beings do that. God never does. He's with you in the still quiet waters and the great times in life. And here's the deal. I think He's even more so with us when we go through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not alone. The devil will tell you you're alone. You're not alone. 
He'll tell you that you're by yourself. He'll tell you God doesn't love you. He'll tell you you've been abandoned. But God is right by your side. Woo! Matthew 28, 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Jesus said, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. God is with us in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Look, God is not looking over the banner of heaven right now going, Ah! What are we going to do? He didn't run over and grab Michael and Gabriel by the robe or by the wings and go, What are we going to do? There's a COVID-19 pandemic on the earth. What are we going to do? God is not doing that. God's not surprised. God's not wigged out. God's not like, hey, you're on your own. I hope it works out. God's not like, well, hey, you'll just come see me sooner. Huh? That's not what God's doing. Genesis 39, 3 says this. Now his master saw that the Lord was with him, Joseph, and how the Lord caused all he did to prosper in his hand. I want to tell you, God is with you even in the midst of the coronavirus. He is with us and he can cause us to prosper despite everything going on in the economy right now. Psalm 39, 21 says, But the Lord was with Joseph and extended kindness to him and gave him favor. Favor. Type in the word favor because I'm going somewhere with that. Favor in the sight of the chief jailer. God is with us. God will give us favor in the midst of this coronavirus. Psalm 35 says this, For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. And then, of course, if you've been in church long, you've heard this before. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I think that that's wonderful. I love it when joy comes in the morning. But I want, And that's a great promise. But I think the most powerful part of that whole scripture is in his favor is life. See, God gave Joseph favor with the jailer. And I want to tell you, he will give us favor with the right people to meet our needs. He can cause you to prosper in the midst of all this. He can give you favor with the right people. God is with us. Romans 8.31 What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Look, if God is for us, what is coronavirus against us? What is a sickness against us? What is anything against us if God is on our side? The name of Jesus is greater than any other name. And you heard last week in the message. God tells us to name drop. He tells us to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And God will hear our prayers. Aren't you glad that we have a God? We serve a God. Our good shepherd doesn't have a deaf ear that he doesn't hear. He doesn't have an arm too short he can't help. Aren't you glad God not only is with us, but he's able to help us? See, the valley of the shadow is a circumstance or a trial in life which has the appearance of destroying us. Type in the word appearance. It's a, it's a valley you walk through and the shadow gives the appearance. It seems like it's going to take you under. But death and its substance has been removed only to leave a shadow. What are Shadows. Shadows are an image of the reality caused by a barrier to the light or distortion to the light. As a matter of fact, as we said, the original language suggests it's a valley of shadows, not even a valley of death. It's death shadows. The good news is, is the death shadows are temporary. The valley won't last forever. You will get through this. You have survived 100% of your darkest days so far. What makes you think you're not going to survive this one? If we're not careful, our valleys in life will cause us to run from God and the death shadow will cause you to run to your own demise. In Darlington, Maryland, several years ago, Edith, the mother of eight children, was coming home from her neighbors one Saturday and noticed that it was really quiet in the house. And if you've had multiple kids you know if they're quiet, something's wrong. She got to the screen and looked through, and she saw her five youngest kids all huddled around looking at something. She thought, what are they into? She came through the screen door. She went over there, and when she looked down at what they were looking at, she almost fainted. They had collected five baby skunks, and they were playing with them in the middle. Well, she didn't know what to do, so she just screamed at the top of her voice, Quick, children, run! 
Well, she scared the children so bad and didn't tell her why. They all each picked up their skunk and ran with it. <laughs> Isn't that the way we do sometimes? God's trying to help us with something. And we pick up the very thing that's trying to demise us and run and carry it with us. Don't run with the skunks. Or you'll come out smelly. Yeah, I did. I said it. Yes, I did. Look, no one is afraid of a shadow. The shadow of a sword cannot cut you. The shadow of a figure cannot grab you. The shadow of a dog cannot bite you. The shadow of the coronavirus cannot infect you or do damage to you. The shadow of death cannot destroy you. See, shadows are, are illusions. And what we imagine is not there. Shadows cannot hurt you, but they can make us hurt ourselves because our active imaginations scare us to death sometimes. And if we're not careful, we'll let this coronavirus and all the shadows of everything going on cause you to run from God and run more deeper into a problem. It was Franklin D. Roosevelt who said, We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Look, when the financial shadow, death shadow comes over you and says, you're going to lose it all. You're going bankrupt. You're never going to get a job again. You've been laid off. You're done for this time. We need to remember the truth in light that says, Philippians 4.19, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory. In Malachi 3.10, that He'll rebuke the devourer. That He'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for the tither and the giver. Hallelujah! When the sick death shadow comes along, we need to put some light on that and say, wait a minute, I see the death shadow lurking and it's telling me I've got cancer and I've only got months to live. Or coronavirus is coming and boy, you're going to be on a ventilator. And or this or that or whatever it might be. When that sick shadow comes, that sick death shadow comes, bring out the light of the Word of God and expose it and say, wait a minute, First Peter 2.24 says, by His stripes I was healed. Psalm 103 and 3 says He sent His Word and healed all my diseases. Acts 3, 16, at the great name of Jesus, this man was strengthened and healed and made whole. Matthew 4, 23-24, says Jesus went about and healed all who were sick. I want to tell you, we need to start putting some light on these shadows. Woo! When the addiction death shadow comes and says, I've got a hold of you, you'll never be able to get off drugs. You'll never be able to put the bottle down. You'll never be able to turn the pornography off. You need to get some light of this word to put that out and say, according to Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion or power or rule over you because you're no longer under the law but under grace. The grace of God gives you freedom to be free. You don't have to be bound by addictions anymore. And the truth can be said for disappointments, loneliness, and so forth. See, don't let the trials and circumstances of life called the shadows or the death shadow of coronavirus scare you into leaving the presence of God. Stay with Him. He will see you through. God is with us in our darkest valleys. Song of Solomon 2, 1 through 2. I love this scripture. It says, I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. Did you know Jesus is the lily of the valleys? And he says in verse 2, like a lily among the thorns, so is my darling among the maidens. You may walk in the valley, but you'll still have the lily with you. Listen, if you are never in a valley in life, how will you ever know God to be the lily of the valley? It's the valleys of life that make us stronger. As a matter of fact, if you're never in a valley, you'll never be able to fully appreciate the mountaintops. Did you know fruit doesn't grow on mountaintops? Fruit grows in the depth of the valley. Whew. Did you know that your life can be beautifully fruitful even in the midst of your worst valley? Even in the midst of the coronavirus or whatever it is you're faced with? He goes on to say, not only am I going to get you through... The valley of the shadow of death. He says in the second part of this scripture, your rod and your staff comfort me. Listen, when I was a little boy, I, I just had terrible fear. I, I little bitty thing. I don't know, a four or five years old. And I'd wake up in the night and I'd be petrified. And I, 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 could, I, could, I, I couldn't move. I thought, you know, the creature from the Black Lagoon was coming to get me. I thought I was going to get eat up. I mean, I just watched too many terrible movies at young age, whatever it was. And I would think if I could just make it to my parents' room, I'll get in the bed 
and I'll get next to my dad and everything will be cool. And I'd finally muster up enough strength to run as fast as I could out my door, make a left turn right through their door, and I'd jump in the bed next to my dad, and it was amazing. Just the fact that I got in the bed next to him, immediately all fears were gone. I was comforted. The petrified feeling I had was gone. The being terrified was gone. I was comforted. By the presence of my Father. I want to tell you, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. When fear tries to grip your heart, run to your heavenly Father and His presence will comfort you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We've talked at length about the sheep. They're helpless animals. We know they have nothing to defend themselves with. Listen, it's impossible to evade valleys in this life. It is. But what's not impossible is to be in it and not to fear, realizing that Jesus is in the death shadow with you. Did you know that it is possible to walk through your worst, darkest, deepest, longest valley and not be afraid, not be terrified, not be petrified? Oh, sure, you want to get on the other side, but you can walk through it without fear because Jesus is with you. When the sheep in the valley and the beast shows up, they get startled and they look. And when they see the shepherd, they immediately settle back down because they know the shepherd will protect it. I love that. We need to get our eyes off of our, our enemy, off our problems, off our death shadows and put them on to God and let him give us peace. Let Him give us joy and the fruit of the Spirit. We need to get our eyes off the coronavirus and the news. Look, it may do you some good to turn the news off for the next seven days. Just turn off the death reports and the death shadows. And get in the Word of God and find out what God has to say. Woo! The rod was a, was, a, was a heavy, hard club that was two to three feet long. And the, and the shepherd would have it. And if the wild animal came, the predator to eat the sheep, he'd hit him with it or he'd throw it at him. Either way, he would protect it. And the rod gave that shepherd authority. It was a, just a, a nice, good beating stick. And it gave that shepherd authority. I want to tell you, our rod of authority today is the Bible. Our rod of authority today is the Bible, God's Word. When the enemy comes, pull out your rod of authority in the Scriptures to combat it. When sickness comes, get out your rod. It's the only offensive weapon God gave us with the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6. When financial despair and depravity comes, get out your rod of authority. When the coronavirus death shadow comes and says, I'm going to get you, get out your rod and take authority in Jesus' name. The devil can't fight the word. It was Jesus that defeated the devil with, it is written, it is written, it is written. It was authority. And you and I have that same authority. He said, your rod and your staff. The staff, of course, you would know what it would be. It was like eight foot long and it had a crook. And if a sheep was dangling off the edge of a cliff and holding on, that shepherd would take that staff and with the little crook and pull it back to safety. It was there to protect the sheep. As so the rod and the staff instinctively comforted the sheep. It is the comfort of knowing that the shepherd will be able to meet us in an emergency. Look, I have insurance on my automobiles. I hope I'll never need them, but I'm comforted by the fact that I have it. I, I, we have the greatest military in the whole world. I hope we never have to go to another war, but I'm comforted knowing that we can be protected. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 27, 1 through 5. You'll see it on the screen. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, though the coronavirus encamps against me, my heart will not fear. Wow, the war arise against me in spite of this. I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord, that shall I seek. In other words, I'm not going to get my eyes on all the dread and stuff going on, the death shadows. I'm going to get my eyes on one thing from the Lord. What is it I'm seeking? He says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That I may live in the presence of God every day. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to meditate in His temple. That means get your mind off the death shadows of the coronavirus and everything else this world has got going on. And on to God. 
For in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. He'll, he'll hide me and protect me. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. I love that. He will lift me up on a rock. Man, what, a, what an awesome scripture. That'd be one to memorize and get in your spirit over and over and over to know God's got you. He also said in Psalm 86 and 7, When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. He is a God who answers. Psalm 91, 5 through 6, You will not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence, the coronavirus that stalks in darkness or the destruction that lays waste at noon. Hallelujah. God said we don't have to fear. I choose not to fear. And the last part of that in closing is probably my favorite part of this whole passage. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Again, there's going to be valleys. But you're intended to go through them. They're not permanent. And they're just shadows. The valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will not fear. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Do you know what comfort me means in the Hebrew? I love this. It means sigh or breathe. You ever... You ever been on edge that maybe a loved one was having a very serious surgery and the doctor comes out and you're on pins and needles and you're in the waiting room and you have family there. Maybe your pastor's there. You're just, you're just sitting on pins and needles because you're wanting And the doctor says, well, we got good news. Everything went great. And you'll, you can see the people. I've, I've been in many rooms like that and watch. And I've seen people. <gasps> it's just a sigh of relief. Or have you ever gotten a phone call and you've been on, you're not sure what's going to happen and they tell you, hey, you know, it looked bad at first, but man, they're pulling through or, or this happened or this was good news and you've been on the phone. And you tell, Thank God. God said His Word and His presence. Listen, listen very closely. When you get in His presence and you get in His Word, He said it'll cause all the anxiety in you to leave and it'll cause you to go, oh, God's got this. It's like hearing good news on a bad day. It's like hearing your loved one's going to make it. It's like hearing the doctor say, well, it didn't look good at first, but man, it's, it's going to be all right. I was born, I was a very sick baby. I'm going to close with this. And the doctor, uh, my mom said I, I was very sick. I, I had a hyenal hernia as a baby. I was in the hospital for days. Uh, they didn't, weren't sure, and uh, my mom, the doctor, really didn't tell my mom at the time how serious it was. And she told me, she's just told me this recently. She said, you were sick. She didn't realize how sick you were until the doctor came in and grabbed you, and he started playing. He said, well, little boy, he said, I, he said, I'm sure I'm glad to see you. He said, I just didn't know if you were going to make it. And my mom said, excuse me? He said, yeah, he was, he was, he was sick. I didn't know if he was going to make it. You know, my mom, you know, <gasps> kind of a brief. Listen, I don't know what you're faced with today, but I want to tell you something. I don't care what the coronavirus and the death shadows or whatever it is coming against you. If you'll get in the presence of God, if you'll get in the Word of God, God will put His presence on you. He'll give you a word from His Scriptures and it'll cause you to go, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but this is a word straight from heaven for now. If that's you, I want you to hold your hands out as a way to receive. You get ready because when I bless you, I feel it in my spirit. You're going to feel that sigh and that comfort of relief. Oh, I can breathe again. And you're going to sleep soundly tonight. Are you ready?